Hello everyone, we are Team South County Gadgets and this is the Project Socket Steward. Our team's technical directors include Jamie Murdoch, who is an electrical engineer, entrepreneur, and founder of South County Gadgets, along with Joe Gundel, who is a software engineer at Hayward, who helped out with the software and coding for the Socket Steward. Our team of designers include Samuel Isaacson, Brian Bissonette, Liam Brennan, Logan Brooks, Ulu Benga Ulu Fasula, and Andrew Ribeiro. South County Gadgets is an entrepreneurial firm that is determined to make a difference by challenging industry standards for the quality of potentially hazardous products. The company was founded by Jamie Murdoch in 2022, who is the sponsor of Project Socket Steward and is an acclaimed technical director for the URI Elecomp capstone project, having sponsored three previous projects for them, along with four projects for the UMass Dartmouth capstone program. The motivation behind our project is to allow users to safely use their appliances without the risk of burning their house down, damaging their appliances, or electrocuting themselves. Thousands of fires from faulty electrical wiring cause hundreds of deaths and hundreds of millions of dollars in damage each year. Our aim is to detect faults and outlets and prevent the fire hazards shown on the screen from occurring. Then the socket steward will halt, inform the user on what happened, and let them know how to address the issue in order to proceed. By challenging the industry standard on electrical wiring and educating the public, we hope to create a higher standard of innovation while protecting people, the environment, and the economy. The anticipated best outcome for this project is to have a fully functional prototype capable of powering an array of common appliances. The device was aimed to be AFCI GFCI protected and include temperature sensing, load and inrush current sensing, and line voltage sensing. Once a hazard has been detected, we also thought it was crucial for our prototype to print the issue on the screen, as well as be able to verbally communicate the issue for those with vision problems. Our team was able to achieve our anticipated best outcome, and we delivered a prototype that includes all of our previously decided on features. The following is a brief summary of our team's accomplishments. We researched the issue, we developed a plan, and developed code that monitors and alerts for fault detection, and we created a demonstration board that simulates common faults. According to the National Fire Protection Association, there are roughly 270 deaths and 18,000 fires caused by electrical wiring faults annually. These faults led to almost $700 million in property damage. The socket steward was designed to prevent these faults from causing fires. The end goal is to eliminate the risk completely. We are also aiming to bring our product to the light of the market and in the process develop a profitable startup company focused on assisting the general public. Hello, I'm Brian Bissonnet. I'm gonna be going over the generic block diagram for how the socket steward operates. So a hazard or potential hazard is detected. The socket steward detects these through its hardware and communicates with its software. The power is disconnected from the appliance connected to the socket steward. The user is alerted to what was prevented and then is given steps to how to prevent this in the future and how to fix the hazard. Being on the hardware team for the socket steward, my individual contributions related to the hardware itself. So this came to picking out different components that would work for our circuits. It involved building things such as the quad thermistor temperature sensors, the LED readers, the reading circuits for the voltage and current, uh, creation of the dummy load for the socket steward to test voltage and current when there's no appliance plugged into the receptacle, um, creating a manual interrupt for the socket steward to break the circuit when the hazard is detected, and creating the prototype housing for the socket steward prototype. Um, this came along with designing the basic wiring diagram of what should be wired where to which circuit, um, and I assisted in creating all these different physical connections between the features and the featherboard. Um, when it came to building the actual housing, I helped with determining mounting locations and methods for fixed features within the prototype, such as the software featherboard, the display, the different circuit boards, the power supply, the in itself, and voltage and current sensing. Uh, this came with a lot of fine-tuning with uh, lengthening and shortening and joining different connections to make sure it comfortably fit within the housing. And this all came down to being able to finally test the prototype and make sure that everything reliably turned on and that all features worked. 
These images demonstrate some of the work that was initially done to get to our final step in the prototype. And on the left is the temperature sensors and LED readers. And as their first initial mock-up of functionality, in the center is the testing of specifically the LED readers with their new A to D comparators, along with the mirroring corresponding user LEDs. As you can see, the bottom right LED is lit up the yellowish amber one. That is to signify that the LED reader is picking up that the yellow amber light on the receptacle is also lit up. And on the right is a drawing up of the schematics for the different features and components that we fully built throughout the semester. The two images on the left are the two different variations for the dummy load test circuits hooked up to a relay in order to test the voltage and current as soon as the socket steward is plugged into the wall receptacle. And on the right side is the testing of the circuits with the voltage and current sensing to make sure that they work and function well with the software. I will now introduce Liam Brennan, who is also a part of the hardware team. My name is Liam Brennan. I was a part of the hardware team. And from my individual contributions made to the project throughout the year, I assisted in designing a quad thermistor circuit for temperature reading. These four temperature locations consisted of ambient temperature, outlet plug temperature, and the load and line terminal screws on the Eaton outlet receptacle. I created a prototype housing. The team decided to keep it simple and just alter a four gang outlet box to house all our components. I soldered connections between components on the proto board. I assisted in determining locations of the various features and components that were used. If the location was sufficient, I was then tasked with soldering the component down. These components consisted of creating the feather board stack, our phototransistor circuit, the quad thermistor circuits, 5 volt power supply, voltage and current sensing, and our GPIO expander board. I also designed and printed a custom faceplate that will mount over our components in the 4-gang outlet box with necessary cutouts for the OLED, speaker and status LEDs, and our Eaton outlet receptacle. On the left is the circuit schematic for the thermistor circuit. A 0.1 microfarad capacitor was added in parallel with the 10k ohm resistor to reduce noise on our data logging. And on the right figure, the thermistor circuit is being used to data log temperature readings on the four points that we designed for. So there is ambient temperature, outlet plug temperature, and load in line terminal screw temperature. On the left is a side view of the internal wiring and connections made between most of the components. We had to add additional stacking headers to the feather board to bring the OLED as close to the faceplate as possible. And on the right figure is a top-down view. Notice how everything fits within the four game box. Not pictured, but on the right side of the outlet box are cutouts for easy access to the micro SD card for data logging and a cutout for USB-C connection to allow us to update software as changes are made without having to take out the entire unit. Here are two renderings of the CAD models that were designed. These models were designed using SOLIDWORKS and then printed out in the 3D lab that is provided by the engineering school. The faceplate has the necessary cutouts for the LEDs, the OLED screen, our Eaton outlet, and the speaker holes. And on the right is a rendering of the bracket. This bracket mounts to the OLED screen and then it's secured into place with screws that go through the faceplate and into the four gang box. I would like to now introduce Logan Brooks. He was a part of the quality assurance team this year. So he will be speaking about test procedures that the team simulated throughout the semester. My individual contributions to our project were researching electrical hazards and fire hazards, the research of outlets, appliances, and thermal runaway, the development of features and capabilities for the socket steward, and replicating CPSC tests using impaired appliance cords. I also developed multiple testing fixtures to replicate hazards. I researched components for the demonstration board to show hazards. I constructed the physical demonstration board. I soldered multiple components and fixtures together, and I created a mounted resistor board with a heat sink and a fan. 
I also tested multiple of the impaired appliance cords to calibrate the socket steward, and I built a data logger fixture to, for our demonstration board that was smaller than our original model. This section of our demonstration board uses five daisy-chained outlets to simulate how a room in a house would be wired in series. Also, on the far right of the daisy chain, there is an insulated AFCI outlet that we have mounted thermistors to in order to capture thermal runaway of the circuit. The thermistors are then attached to a data logger, which captures the temperature change over a certain period of time. On the left, we have our completed fire ignition demonstration board. This board is able to monitor multiple different things, including temperature, voltage, and current. On the right, we have our fuse box and our circuit breaker that we included in order to properly simulate the wiring that you would find in a common household. Next, I would like to introduce my partner on the Q&A team, Sam Isaacson. My name is Sam Isaacson, and I'm an electrical engineer major, and I'm a part of the quality assurance team for my project. Initially, I started by researching about electrical fires and what hazards are present in, current, in the current industry. We then created a list of features that we deemed necessary and looked into components that will address these features. It was at this point that we split up into three teams, software, hardware, and quality assurance. QA conducted several tests with equipment obtained from URI faculty and other devices that we created to find out which points get hot on an outlet. My next task started with impairing extension cord plugs to mimic the CPSC's thermal runaway test. We did so by drilling into the sides and altering the crimps of the plug to reach our set value. We logged the heating information to create data sets for an exemplar plug and then one and two watt impaired plugs. These data sets were used by the software team to determine when the socket steward should halt. My next major task was creating a fire ignition demonstration board displaying various faults that are existent with normal outlets in other instruments. The image on the left shows our lab setup for drilling into the plugs and using tweezers to alter the resistance in the crimps. The middle photo shows how we completed our thermal runaway test by attaching thermistors in our extension cord that is connected to a space heater. The image on the far right is the data logger capturing temperature data during a heat test. We found that the more we conducted these tests, the more impaired the plug would get, allowing it to get hotter much quicker. The first image shows a section of our demonstration board that highlights the quality of different outlets. From left to right, the quality ranges from old, loose, and worn out to cheap and low quality, then a tight-fitting, good quality outlet, and the last one being an exceptional hospital-grade outlet. The photo on the right is a section of our demo board that reveals the dangers that come from a loose light socket to plug adapter and how it can arc and be hazardous. Next, I would like to introduce Olubanga Olufasola on the software team. Hello, my name is Olubanga Olufasola. My individual contribution for the project was building, soldering a prototype board for the socket seaward to develop code for the socket and also testing of the built prototype board by using an example code from the Arduino ID library to make sure that the board that was built is working properly. This research on the full capability on the M4 Express processor that the hardware team will be using to make sure he has the capacity to work very well. We worked with the software technical director to implement and test the code to calculate the voltage reading from thermistor sensor, the code for the alarm login, the implementation and testing of the amphibian temperature sensor code, and the timer interrupt code for the GFCI LED receptacle, implementation and testing of the root mean square voltage reading code, voltage drop code and the count time I code to monitor the GFCI LED blinks. Work with the software technical director to implement the constant current LED light dimming code for the GFCI fault and arc fault.
on this slide is a snippet code from the system control program to disconnect power through GFCI relay pin for a fault detection from an appliance that was plugged to the socket seaward socket. On this slide is a snippet of a code from the monitor program that was wrote to calculate the amphibian temperature of a sensor and also the voltage of a receptacle. On this slide is the block diagram that was used to develop the code. By doing a software detection fault, disconnection of power from an appliance when a fault is detected, alerting the user about the detection, and also steps to proceed forward are given to the user in order to resolve the problem that the software from the socket seawall detect from an appliance that was plugged to the socket. I will now hand over the presentation to my fellow team member, Andrew Ribeiro. Thank you, Olu. My name is Andrew Ribeiro, and I was part of the software team. My individual contributions include research data and provided generated reports in regards to electrical fires and their causes, determined features and potential ideas, disassembled power strips for measurements, researched and finalized potential processor platforms for development, developed code to use the processor platform for various current voltage measurements, cleaned up code that displays to the screen to look nicer, assisted in many other tasks when coding was not possible, built and tested a development platform which was confirmed working with test code, coded, in part, the data logging program we are using to acquire voltage and currents, Wrote pieces of code responsible for improved measurements, timing, and data acquisition for the purposes of accuracy and jitter. Found multiple flaws in the software design that caused inaccuracies to appear in measurements, then fixed them appropriately. Designed multiple pieces of code not in the final product to ensure that pieces of hardware behaved as expected and desired, such as the relays. Behaved as a timekeeper for the team. And co-managed the capstone running requirements, especially the risk assessments. Relating to my accomplishments, the image on the far left is code that I had some part in writing that logs the temperatures, voltage, and current we need onto a micro SD card as a CSV file to be viewed on a computer. The image in the middle and the image in the bottom right corner is code I was writing for being able to play back a previous logging instance on the processor platform itself, but unfortunately it's currently shelved and not present in the final code at this time. The image in the top right corner is a function I wrote to acquire voltage and current from whatever was hooked up to the platform at any moment in time and save it for some calculations to be used later. The image in the top left corner is definitions for filters that smooth out data so values do not jump all over the place, which was a consistent issue we had throughout this entire project. The image in the bottom left corner is code I partially wrote to calculate the voltage and current from the inputs to the processor platform, as well as to read in and smooth out the temperature values that are also at the inputs. Lastly, the image on the right is the beginnings of error handling code, with my part being the error messages on the far right being implemented into the structure. This was not finished and needs to be worked on more. In summary, the anticipated best outcome was achieved. The best possible outcome was to have a fully functional prototype. This prototype had to be capable of powering an array of common appliances. It had to detect possible instances of hazards and cut power off to the attached appliance if a hazard was detected, and communicate the hazard and reason for occurrence through digital display and or vocal audio. The team was able to achieve all the requirements that were set at the beginning of the year. First and foremost, our team would like to thank our technical director, Jamie Murdoch, for his dedication and time, not only to us, but to the project. The passion Jamie shows day in and day out shows our team he truly cares for the project and wants to see the best possible outcome. The team is eternally grateful to be working alongside him. We would also like to thank Joe Gundel for joining the team. We are extremely grateful for Joe to take the time out of his busy schedule to assist and guide our team in software development. 
We would also like to thank the University of Rhode Island for providing its students with the experience, knowledge, and resources for us to succeed with this project. And lastly, we would like to thank Dr. Hari Sunak for curating the best capstone design program. Thank you for giving us the opportunity as engineering students to finally apply our skills for practical use.